How's it going guys? So today in this video I'm going to be talking about coding tests, how to approach them, what kind of coding tests I've had to do and how I kind of think is the best way to put your best foot forward when it comes to that interview process or that part of the interview process. Now when you go for an interview for a developer role, chances are if you get through that first interview they're probably going to want to send you a test to do at home to check your skills, to see how you work through problems and really to gauge you, not just as a person in an interview, but how you are as the developer. Obviously there are places that will give you a test on the spot. They might make you do a whiteboard test, a pit of pair programming. Obviously use resources like Glassdoor to kind of find out what interview processes are like at the companies you're applying to. Um, you know, some places might not do a take home test, but in my experience, a lot of places that I've applied to have either given me a test on the day that I go to the interview or they've sent me a coding test to do at home. So in this video, I'm going to show you the two coding tests that I did. Um, the first one that got me my first job and then the second coding test that I did that got me my current job. So this was the coding test I got from my first job. It basically consisted of the brief was I needed to create a user profile um, in a JSON with all sorts of information and I needed to show that to the person running the website um, using AngularJS and not using jQuery for these tabs. So I got the test at nine in the morning. I needed to return back by 12 p.m. Uh, what I'd done. So I had three hours to basically build this. So the first thing I actually did was I spent, I'd say maybe an hour, hour and a half, just building the JSON file for all this data. So the name, uh, the user images, all these pictures here, all the different posts um, on all the friends it, details and information. I think I spent most of my time actually building that JSON structure. And then I spent the rest of the time obviously getting it all here and displayed. Obviously the design isn't that great. Um, I remember I left doing these tabs until last because um, I Googled it quickly and I saw the solution was a bit more complicated than I thought it was going to be. Um, eventually I found an amazing answer on Stack Overflow uh, about how to do tabs in Angular JS without using jQuery. Um, and I think the main idea of this task was to see Number one, how I structured my JSON file, if I understood how to build a JSON properly. And number two, if I could then display that data as was required in the brief. So I needed to have a tab with my information, a tab with posts, and a tab with friends. Above and beyond that, that wasn't, you know, nothing else was really needed. So that's what I built. Going into my second job, this is what I built. It was basically a weather app that I had to show the weather in certain locations, but not using an API. So I had to build a web scraper to do that. It's kind of funny since I built this, it doesn't actually work anymore. If I go into the console, all I get from the server is an empty response. So I think it's something on the server side that isn't working anymore. Um, basically just to run this down, the task I was given was to build a weather app that didn't use an API. I didn't have any time limit to do this. I didn't have any framework that I had to build it in. I think it was a very open task to see how uh, someone applying to the job or I approach an issue or approach a problem. So with this one, obviously I don't know Python. <laughs> so the traditional web scraping language is Python. I didn't know it. So I had to very quickly work out how do I do web scraping with Node.js. Um, I found a couple of great packages that help you to scrape websites in Node.js. The thing that took me the most time with this task though was finding a website that gives you weather information but doesn't generate it um, with JavaScript. So the whole thing with web scraping, at least from what I can tell, and then using Node.js, maybe it's different than Python, um, you need to get unique identifiers, like unique classes or unique IDs that have the data that you need inside of it. And it took me a long time to find a website, uh, hunting through loads of weather websites. Um, 
and their source code, kind of find a weather website that had a little bit of hard-coded data, had some unique identifiers that I could go and pull that data out from, and obviously something that my server would work with. So that's actually what took me the most time. It took me about two days to build this. So I spent about a day and a half on the server side getting the scraper working, and then about half a day um, just getting a front end built together. Um, again, I built this in AngularJS, even though I knew my current job, the one I was applying to, worked in Angular 2. I didn't know it well enough to build this specific task in Angular 2. Um, so I went ahead and just built an AngularJS just because that's the framework that I know. It's one of the frameworks that I know really well, so I can really prototype something very quickly. Um, but again, most of the work here was actually done server side. So obviously, as you can see from those two examples of coding tests, you can kind of also see where I was at in my career. In the first coding test, obviously it was a lot simpler, but I had three hours to do something and it didn't look that good. Um, it also took me quite a while to build in AngularJS, even though that was the framework that I knew and that I was you know, learning at the time. But I think the major jump that you can see here is the difference between my first coding test that I did and the second coding test that I did. In the second coding test, it was open-ended. There was no time limit on it, but the depth and the scope of the project was so much deeper um, than what I had been doing at my job and also what I was doing in my personal projects. So, but what I had learned at my job at the time was that there's a solution for everything. You just need to hunt for it and you need to find it and you need to work a little bit. But when you get given a task to build a scraper and you don't know Python, well, then you search on Google and you find a solution and you build something and you tinker with it and you hack it together until it works, until it gives you the solution that you need. I'm not saying that's how you should approach work, but I'm just saying to show who you are as a programmer. That's why coding tests are so fun for me to look at and do is because you can be the best interviewer in the world, but you might be a terrible programmer. You might also be a terrible interviewer, but you might be an amazing programmer. And I really like the fact that a coding test gives you that opportunity to show your strengths that you might not have elsewhere. Another thing to consider when building a coding test um, is to really think about what you're doing. Because chances are, if the person that's gonna receive it, if they like you, they're gonna invite you back in for a second interview. And chances are that second interview is gonna mainly consist of talking about your coding test. So you really need to be able to explain in a clear way why you built something in a certain way, why you designed it in a certain way, um, why in my case in the second one, why the server did what it did. Um, I'll also look at the mistakes that you made and address them openly. Obviously in that second one I made, I built an Angular JS, even though I knew going into the job that they worked in Angular 2, I addressed that upfront, why I built an Angular JS. Um, I also didn't do a couple of things that were optional on the coding test. And again, I addressed that straight up. I was like, I didn't have time to do it. I wanted to get this back to you in a reasonable time. I didn't want to drag it out too long. Um, so it's important to be able to talk about what you did and what you didn't do as well. So I think the main takeaway from this video is don't be afraid of coding tests. They're not there to test you. <laughs> They're there to sort of open you up a little bit more to the person that's interviewing you or to the company you're interviewing at. It helps them get to know you on a little bit more of a professional level. Um, it also gets them to know where you're at in terms of your skill level. You know, they might be asking for a junior programmer, but you might have the skills of a mid-level or even a senior level, who knows? Um, and that way a company can really look at you more objectively. So don't be afraid of coding tests. They're good fun. They're a great way to also practice. Um, I now can look back at the ones that I've done in the past and be like, okay, how would I do that differently? So again, it's one of these things that you can keep looking at your progression. Once again, thanks a lot for watching. Um, it was really cool to see so many people interacting with the channel. If you have any comments for me, then please leave them down below. I answer every single comment. And if you haven't done so already, please go ahead and subscribe. So until next time, thanks a lot for watching.